Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. These are uh, Dan Carraher 904 Integral Knives. Wow, very cool. So when you think of pocket knives, what's the most likely other world that you might cross over into, right? When you think knives, knives go good with... If you said golf, initially I'd be like, no, that's probably not. But in this case, actually, yes. Uh, in fact, if you are somebody who is an avid golfer, it's likely that you've heard Dan Carraher's name before. Now, I didn't know this, but apparently he trains and has trained many professional golfer. So that was really interesting. If you type in his name on Google, that's actually what will come up first. So that's really neat. I'm trying to learn how to be better. So maybe I should, <laughs> maybe I should ask him for some tips. Uh, thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So uh, this is mine. This is uh, one that was actually gifted to me by uh, this gentleman here, that's Sierra underscore bound uh, on Instagram. Awesome guy, wonderful. Uh, it was just a really, really amazing gift. As you can see, it is definitely a knife that gets carried and used a lot. I really like carrying and using this guy. Um, but uh, make sure you follow him. It's, uh, he also sent me his own personal Damasteel variant. So these come in, um, you know, like a standard like configuration, which you're looking at here. Uh, this is actually a PBD integral. It's a key element here, uh, and then M390, and then they have like half-dressed versions in Damasteel and Titanium, and then they also do, uh, he also has full-dressed Timascus versions. Now, I'm going to talk about the price right off the bat, which is not something I normally do. It's just really impressive. So these are, the parts are all manufactured by Bestec, which if you guys have been watching my channel, you'll know that Bestec has uh, some pretty incredible manufacturing quality and it's only been getting better uh, as time has progressed. This is an integral and if you are new to the knife world, a titanium integral knife is one where the handle is entirely a single piece of titanium. Um, that is not a, uh, that's not a cheap process. In fact, it can potentially be an expensive process, uh, an even more expensive, pro uh, expensive process if something at all is messed up with the single block of titanium that these handle skills are milled from. So while, yes, it is titanium, I can get an M390 in titanium knife from, but it is not exactly the same <laughs> as an integral. An integral just costs more money to create, right? So you're going to pay more money for that. But uh, base price on the, uh, the standard model, base price is $450, which right off the bat, Right? When we have a standard, those of you who have been around in the knife world, you're thinking, what's a standard price for an integral knife that is manufactured overseas and is using premium materials? It's right about $450. Where do we get that? I think the Riot Jack, the original Riot Jack is kind of where a lot of people get that. At least that's where I get my foundation for it, right? Um, $650 for a damn steel variant, which I think is pretty fair. Honestly, the most shocking the most shocking is the full dress Timascus version coming in at $950. I don't know about you, but I don't know of another full dress Timascus integral knife <laughs> that's coming in just shy of a thousand. Um, that's incredible. That's really, really incredible. So um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm on board with those prices right off the bat. Let's go ahead and um, I'll get mine back out here in a second. Very cool of Scott to put my logos and stuff on it. Let me get the, the, the real pretty one out here for you guys to look at. We're going to do um, some measurements. Overall length of the 904 is coming in at, I don't want to touch it with the tape, seven and a half inches. Blade length is three and a quarter. And then your cutting edge is coming in right at three. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat, excuse me, bump the camera, Model 2. So you can see here, it's not a super long knife, but it does have a lot of presence, right? From the heft of the handle scales to the height of the blade and the, you know, really cool Tanto recurve harpoon 
I guess is what I'm going to call it. Um, I know. Blade Shape Police. I know. Stop right there! Please spare me. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's, it feels like a lot bigger knife than it actually is. Um, how about up against the, uh, Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3 where, where's my Para? There it is. So this is about, it's very, very close, a little bit longer than the Spyderco Para 3 and height wise, there are some similarities, but I will tell you, it does definitely carry larger and heavier than the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, last but not least, I need, I really need to get some lubricant inside that pair of three. That thing is stiff, gunked up. Um, last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Benchmade Bug Out. How's the action on this guy? So this is a brand new one. And there you go. Mine did that as well. Um, this guy has really been out in it, um, especially here lately. Now I cleaned it up. Uh, quite a bit before um, I did the uh, video, but the internals are a little bit dirty. I need to take it apart. It's still plenty smooth, but I think I've got some dirt or something in there from using it, and that's just that's the name of the game. If you're gonna get take a knife out uh, that's got bearings and you're gonna use it, that's gonna happen. Fortunately, these are really really easy to take apart because they are integrals. We're going to talk about that later. Integral, integral, I know. He says that weird. Well, you know. Uh, length and height. Carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3. As you can see here, it's not really all that thick. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. And there it is. Um, yeah, you can see here there are, you know, it, it does have some height to it. In fact, at maximum, it's about the same height as the Spyderco Para 3. So that's something to keep in mind. There is no internal milling. Let me get my, you can get my flashlight down in the description. These are very inexpensive. There is no internal milling. That'd be kind of hard to do on a uh, on an integral. Um, so yeah. And then your blade stock thickness, which we're going to measure on mine because I just don't want my calipers on that blade. Uh, let's see here. Blade stock thickness looks to be like 135-ish. That's just what I'm going to guess. Actually, no. I'm way off. Apparently, this is 150 thousandths. Yeah, maybe closer to 155 thousandths. So, fairly thick blade. We're talking about ZT's. Zero tolerance is old standard for blade stock thickness. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind. Weight. Uh, there's going to be slight, slight variations, maybe between titanium and Damascus, but it, it would be trivial. So five ounces, not bad for an integral, right? Keep that in mind. Same thing, five, about five ounces, a little over five ounces for these guys. So uh, more than some people want to carry, but the vast majority of people, right? You know, if you like, if you if you wear like short wind pants shorts every day, or if your pants are made of wax paper, it might not be, I'm just kidding. Um, for, you know, some people, it's gonna be too heavy. For, for most people, I think it's gonna be just fine. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of description that talks about my tools. Um, I believe the pivot is a T8, yeah. It is. Um, and what about the rest? Well, there isn't any more. Um, there's a, a hidden screw for the pocket clip, but there is no disassembly of the handle scales because the handle scales are one piece. So taking the blade out is pretty much as simple as just taking the pivot out and pulling the blade out. It's actually pretty simple. Now you're going to have to push usually, I think, uh, you, you kind of slip the, um, the, uh, bearings in first and let them kind of fall into what well, you want. You'd put one in and then the other one, I think how I do it is I, you know, kind of push it in with the blade. But once you do it once, it's pretty simple. And that's the nice thing about an integral is there's not really a lot of steps to disassembly. They're pretty easy to clean out. Most of the time, you won't even have to take that stuff out. In fact, like with this guy, where it's like not quite wanting to fall shut, it's probably just some stuff on the face of the blade where the detent ball rides and it can be blown out with some compressed air, and then, you know, maybe I'll put a little bit of 10 weight back on the detent ball and we'll be good to go, right? If I do actually need to take it apart, 
There's not a lot of steps. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. That's something that's really great about an integral knife. So let's go ahead and um, move into the meat and potatoes here. Um, so these are contoured scales, which is something that I very much love. The other thing that I very much love is because of the shape of the flipper tab, which is like this, and how it ends up when it's open, the profile of the knife is pretty ergonomically open. And even though this area right here is not, you know, exactly like a perfect choil, a perfect finger choil, it does work. And you can choke up on the blade and you can kind of rock back and keep your finger out of the way. There's no specific guard though. So if you're not paying attention, you will run your hand up on the blade. Um, but even if you were to rock back here, uh, you still, in my you know experience, I, I've got, I wear uh, an XL glove. Does not mean that I have XL hands. My hands are probably, if you're a guy, right? Uh, your, your hands are probably pretty similar to mine. Um, you can still get a full grip on this guy. It's only people with truly massively, like if you wear a two or a three XL glove, then you are you might be running out of room on this guy, right? If you really want to get a full four finger grip. It's nice. The access to the, uh, the frame lock is nicely carved out and it's actually cut. Is that the case? I think it's actually cut slightly. No, it's not. It just looks that way, but it's not actually cut above. There's just a huge area in here where you can get in and, you know, I don't like it when I have to push down first and then over. I want to be able to just come across, which the reason you can do that is because it's carved out on both sides. So that works. It looks really nice. This is a really understated sort of front look, right? The standard ones are going to kind of look like that, which I think is pretty nice. I like that. It would be cool if he did some versions of it with some texturing. I think that would look awesome. Um, just offer like, you know, a pattern or if he does kind of like a, you know, when they mill a line that sort of outlines the scales and then they do a pattern on the inside, I think that would look really good. But it also looks really good like this, so I don't really have much of a problem. They're in, uh, uh, the ergonomic lines will also lock you in really well, so it doesn't necessarily need texturing. I found, you know, using this guy, you know, outside and just around the house for doing little tiny things. And you got, I, I want to be clear, it's not like I've taken this thing out and abused it right? I've used it like a pocket knife. It's got a few marks here or there, right? The pocket clip itself is kind of beat up. Um, but you know, the funny thing, I just, I must be rubbing it up against something back here. The edge is actually still, you know, plenty sharp. Um, so the M390, I, you know, would assume on this guy is heat treated very well. I have not had an issue with rolling or chipping or anything on these guys. So However, Bestec is heat treating their M390, at least in my experience. And again, I'm not a metallurgist. I don't make knives. I don't do that. I don't test that stuff, right? I can't, I'm, I mean, not with like a science, not, not with machines, right? All I can do is just take my knives out and use them like I do with, like you guys do, right? Um, so I can't speak from there. And I honestly don't use my knives enough and in, an, in a, you know, in, a, in enough different circumstances to be able to definitively say. I want to be very clear about that. Um, but in my limited experience, yeah, it seems like it's doing fine. I don't have any issues with chipping or rolling. Um, so it's been good. And there's been a couple of times, this guy really needs to get oiled. It's fine. There's definitely something in there on the, um, on the face of the blade, right? I think also, if I'm not mistaken, it might need... I'm going to give... Give it just a quick turn of the pivot. I think maybe that might be something that would help. Let's give it a go. Just a little bit. Nothing crazy there, but there's something on the blade face that's causing it to not want to do that. But that's fine. It's like I said, that's going to happen with uh, knives running on bearings if you take them out and use them. Anyways, um, I can't remember what I was saying, but I haven't, I haven't, um, you know, abused this knife. I've just used it like a pocket knife, and it's been really good. Um, but there's enough lock in here where it doesn't need texturing. I do like this little notch up here, the harpoon notch, and it's. I'm not saying it makes it to where jimping is totally unnecessary. I think it still would have been nice to have some up here. There's just been a couple of times while I've used this knife, you know, I thought that would be nice, but it does lock you in pretty well. You don't necessarily need it. I do appreciate the recurve while I'm cutting. Like this is something that will absolutely chew through a cardboard box because of this curvature and then this, I'm not going to say it, it's an abrupt angle, but it definitely is a change, right, in the, the angle of the blade. And then there's some belly out here. Um, it is not thick behind the edge, but it's also not thin. Day-to-day -day tasks, it's fine. It's not, it's not cutting stuff up like my bug out, um, but it's definitely doing the trick. I don't have an issue with it. 
This will be an issue over time if you sharpen these. It's the same thing with any, you know, if you have a, a recurve tanto, this point right here, no matter how good you are, will eventually round out. It's just what's going to happen. I do appreciate that there's a sharpening choil right there. Everything looks nice, right? The final cutting bevel looks good. Everything's great. We have sort of a tumbled finish up here, and then we have a satin finish down here, um, which looks nice. I like that. I love the swedge, the sort of harpoon notch up here. This edge up here is pretty sharp. I don't know how often you're going to have your fingers up there, but, you know, if you do, you're going to find that it's a little bitey. Uh, for those of you who strike flint off of the uh, spine of your blade, you can do that on this guy. So there you go. The blade is definitely, aside from the fact that it is an integral, it is definitely, definitely the coolest part. I love the blade profile. I think it looks awesome. Uh, just, you know, whether you get a plain version or you get a damage steel version, I just like, you know, all the different lines. It just looks really, really good. The rest of the knife is pretty understated. Um, and that allows you to kind of enjoy the blade. Um, I also like that back here, you know, when, when we look at integral knives, sometimes this area back here is decorated or it's meant to, you know, kind of stand out. Kind of like, you know, the opportunity that uh, knife makers and designers will take with the backspacer. Uh, for example, if you look at like the Riyadh Jack, um, we have a lot of texturing things back there. And it looks nice. I also kind of just like it when there's nothing back there. And you can see it just says Dan Carraher. I mean, that, that's what we're seeing back here. This looks nice. The, ni the thing is with integral knives is that there's not really a bad way to do the bad, because it's all one piece of titanium. It just looks cool, because that's not something you tip. How, how likely are you to just run into somebody on the street? It's, I mean, not that like people just walk up and go, hey, can I see your knife? Want to see mine? Sometimes. <laughs> Not usually, right? But if you do, uh, pretty unlikely they're going to be carrying an integral. It's just not going to, it's just very, uh, very unlikely, right? So they look cool. They're interesting just because they are integrals. So the pocket clip is good. It carries deep. We have a uh, nice, <laughs> definitely a thick clip for sure. At least the bill uh, is plenty thick. Good retention on this guy. Not as tight as you might think. It's actually, you know, pretty springy. Um, but I, just, I imagine that's just how it's sprung or maybe just the angle of it. I like the hidden screw. It looks good. Uh, plenty of a ramp here. So getting it in and out of the pocket is going to be plenty easy, even if you're wearing, you know, big, thick, heavy-duty work pants. Really easy with this guy. There is a steel lock bar insert doubling as the over travel stop. Oh, wait, wait, he skipped a feature. Metal complex, there's no lanyard hole. There's a uh, lock bar insert doubling as the over travel stop, which is great. Much appreciated. Uh, stop pin, I believe, is. <laughs> uh, where is the studs? Must be. Yeah, there it is. It's in the front. So can we see it? You can just barely. There's a little bar there. It's running on a channel on the blade. So that's what's stopping it. Uh, and then here's your lockup. Uh, coming in at, oh, 35% or so. Let's look at this guy and see if it's any different. Slightly earlier. I think mine has probably settled in. Yeah. Maybe when I flip it, that's probably when it goes really far. We'll try this one. Let's see. I don't think there's really that much of a difference between these two. Mine's a little tiny bit later, but that's probably just from use, so that's fine. This is actually loosening up now the more I'm like sitting and playing with it. Centering on mine has come off uh, slightly from use, which is not something I'm gonna get after it for. Centering on this guy looks pretty darn perfect. I don't have a complaint about that at all. Uh, Lockup, completely and totally solid. No lock stick, no detent lash. Detent on these guys is a bit light, but because of the angle that you get after the flipper tab, it's definitely a light switch, right? Push button does not feel nearly as natural. You can do it. It's okay. The detent is a little bit light, though. Um, I'm not sure that that's all. I don't know that that's Dan. I got to be honest with you. A lot of best decks in general, the designs are really good. The machining is really good. And then the detent is acceptable, but a, a bit light. I think Bestec could do, at least from my experience, Bestec would do well to heavy up their detent process across the board, 
little bit more clicky, a little bit more of a pull, more of a snap, right? Get that ball a bit deeper, however you're doing that. I think that'd be a little bit better. But these are perfectly acceptable and they work just fine. The reason I'm saying that is because we've got mine here that's been used, right? If it had a bit heavier detent, you'd be able to overcome those areas that will inevitably get dirty, right? A lot of people are gonna say, well, what's the problem with bearings? Well, even if, even if it's running on washers, in fact, especially if it's running on washers, there's gonna be more friction. So a heavier detent is just a good idea in general, right? But for those of you afraid, like I don't wanna take my bearing knives out and use them, it'll be fine, I promise. You can blow them out with compressed air. It takes a long time to slow down a knife that's running on bearings, unless you're like, well, I'm a professional sand cutter. I just sit around all day and just jam my pocket knife into mounds of sand, and it just doesn't work out with bearings. All right, everybody but that guy, you could, you'll probably be okay using your knife, right, uh, in a dirty environment. So, um, pros, size of it, ease of carry is really good. Um, the uh, blade geometry is gonna be great for cutting into, you know, stuff like cardboard, just general, I mean, stuff that you're generally cutting into, right? Ergonomics are good, super cool that it's an integral, fantastic materials, fantastic fit and finish, right? Really cool look. Uh, anything else, what was, I feel like there was another thing that I was going to say, mm, no. Cons, it feels like a, it, it carries like a larger small knife, right? If you're used to carrying the pair of three, it takes up about the same amount of room in your pocket, it just feels like it's much bigger if that makes any sense. Oh, I was also gonna say on pros, incredibly easy to disassemble and maintain because it is a uh, it is an integral. It also, another pro, the price on these things is ridiculous, right? I mean, if you're gonna compare it with like a regular frame lock, well then sure, you can get those for a lot less. For those of you who are specifically looking for an integral knife, one that's made from premium, premium materials and has a great design, right, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, uh, this is a great deal. As especially when you get up into some of the more exotic materials. Wow, he's really pricing these fair. Um, it's just factually true versus real competition out there. It's just the case, right? Um, cons, it needs a heavier detent. It, it does. And that's, again, I think that's best deck. They just need to work on that. Uh, edge, over time, it's gonna round out. Not that that'll really, it's just gonna get, you know, less appealing visually uh, over time as you sharpen those out. Um, what else? Is there another? I wish there was some jimping up here. Um, and I, I think it'd be cool to offer some variants with some texturing on the scales. I think that would be really cool. Um, outside of that though, I don't know that I really have many complaints. As far as integral knives go, this is an incredible, incredible design and a really good choice for people looking for one because you don't have a lot of options. And even when you do, you know, the stuff that we've seen before, a lot of times it's just sold out, right? These, at least at the time of this upload, you can get. I like this a lot. My experience with mine has been great. Very, very appreciative. I mean, it was super cool of Scott to do that. Um, and I love that my logos are on there. This is definitely gonna continue to be a knife that I carry and use a lot. Anyways, um, yeah, this is an extremely recommendable knife. I would urge you to pick this up while you can. No, I have nothing set up with them and I don't get anything if you buy one of these knives. I'm just genuinely recommending it. Um, so uh, no affiliate programs or anything like that. Um, very cool of Scott to loan me his and to give me my own, very happy with that. I think that's gonna be pretty much it today, guys. Please, let me move these out. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.